thank all of you for being here tonight. It's such an honor to have such a distinguished audience. Today's event is dedicated to the work that the Slow Food and Terra Madre Network in Africa uh, uh, will implement over the next four years. So we are very proud that this event is led by our young Africans who are going to present the project so they will clearly express what it is all about and so they will communicate to you the different steps of uh, such a project. So at the beginning of this initiative we would like to pay tribute to a great African man who as As to the current times, to the current age, can definitely be considered one of the greatest men in history, Nelson Mandela. You know that Nelson Mandela, after 27 years in prison, well, 27 years in prison, it was liberated in 1990 and in 1994 it was elected president of South Africa and one of the first initiatives that he wanted to undertake was the peacekeeping process starting from forgiveness and this process was truly fundamental not to go back to an ancient situation of complete chaos and civil conflicts and riots, but at the same time it was absolutely very significant. And the most significant moment was the national anthem. The African national anthem consists of five different languages, three of ethnic groups of South Africa. One is the Afrikaners language and then the English language as well. So he wanted to have these three different elements, also those responsible for the apartheid, to express in this national anthem. So I would like to ask you for your collaboration because, so please stand up and pay tribute to this great men and please also pay tribute to the millions of women and men in Africa who have been suffering because of slavery over the last centuries because they've been suffering apartheid and they've been victims, victims of the old and new forms of colonialism and that at the moment are still suffering and dying of hunger. So please stand up.
give the floor to our host, Milan's mayor, Mr. Giuliano Pisapia. What a wonderful audience and a wonderful project too. And I can say this as I've just been to South Africa where I visited the prison where Nelson Mandela was kept, where he was tortured, where he met all the members of the court and he had the possibility to talk to all the mayors uh, around the world about the different initiatives and also here in Milan we would like to export this food policy together with mayors all around the world and of course uh, we would like to stress the importance also of this great project about the African gardens that will be presented today. So dear Carleen and and, uh, um, President, uh, the General Secretary of FAO, and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I hoped I could also welcome the Minister today. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't come, but I hope that in the future we'll be able to have a Minister who will be the right, determined interlocutor on this type of initiatives as the Minister Kieng has been so far. I would like to thank you for what you do. I would like to thank you for this project uh, that you are going to launch and present today. And first of all, I would like to thank you for choosing Milan for presenting such a project. Uh, so today I'm just a mayor of uh, this uh, big city, of course, but this is uh, the city which can also be considered as the capital of volunteerism, and it is also considered as a reference point for international cooperation. So I deal with uh, small and big projects. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly all these uh, um, problems are not so big if compared to the problems of the world. But I would like to think that only those who are so poor to think that to change the world, that there is really a possibility to do it. So I'm so full that we have to say all together, yes, probably we are all insane from this point of view, but we are insane because we, have, we share the same disease. We have this lucid and rational madness because we can definitely achieve these goals. So they are visible and as pointed out by Mandela, so only if we are united and all together we'll be able to win the important challenges of this century, not of the next century, but we have to focus on the current one. So... You decided to launch this project in Milan, and uh, your fight is our fight. Hunger in the world is a dramatic problem, and even more nowadays when the main cause of hunger is not only the lack of food, but the fact that the poorest populations don't have the possibility to have food. Uh, the food sovereignty is not guaranteed. Why instead there are other peoples, other populations around the world that waste a lot of food and this food waste is no longer acceptable. So President Pedrini, I was reading about your dialogue with Graziano da Silva, the General Director of FAO, and you said that to um, solve the problem of hunger, we would need 34 billion of dollars. Certainly, it is a huge amount, but to save the banks in the crisis, actually, a, a far bigger amount was used. So that's why we have to understand what direction the money will have to be addressed, and we have to give this money to the poor people, to the people who really need. So the resources exist. What is mainly lacking is precise decisions, precise choices, and I think that this new trend, uh, thanks to the actions promoted by slow food, basically reverse the, reverses the relationship with the rest of the world, with the other countries and with the poorest and developing countries. So now we s you can say that uh, we, you have your forces, you have your strengths and we try to support you so that in your country will, you will no longer suffer from hunger and thirst. And we would like this project, the 10,000 gardens in Africa, 
uh, different types of gardens. They could be school gardens or community gardens. So we want these gardens not only to be an excellent project, uh, a symbol, but certainly a project with very tangible effects because we can demonstrate through this project that everyone can do something in his or her own country and we can say that Milan will be fully committed to undertake this project. We trust you and we believe in this project, so Milan and its mayor are going to participate in a very active way in this project. And I would like also to tell you that in Johannesburg, when I met the mayors of the great metropolis at the G40, which is the place for um, exchanging ideas and opinions on the environmental sustainability, well, actually the city of Milan was the one that launched a project that is absolutely visible and that will be implemented for the Expo 2015 and also for the uh, period after the Expo. So we would like to develop this food policy because we think that every city should have a food policy in order to answer all together, to solve all together the problems of hunger and to fight against this serious problem, which means the safeguarding of the proximity of farming and agriculture. For example, from this point of view, Milan is the second city, and then the fight against the food waste and the creation of um, school gardens and community gardens is something that Slow Food has already developed in a different perspective and different co context. And then we would like to change the relationship between the producers and the consumers and to have um, uh, markets with products that are coming from local producers, and we have to change the uh, food production. That's something that we have already started with the support and the involvement of Slow Food. We have created our uh, small farmers market. Um, it is a, a market that can be found uh, at Fabrica del Vapor and all, all it uh, represents all local producers and we hope in the future to be present also in other areas in Milan uh, with other farmers markets and so we truly hope that we'll be able to expand and cover a wider range of territory but today, tonight, we are here to launch and promote this wonderful project whose main protagonist is a continent that unfortunately is not notorious uh, for its wars and conflicts, but instead it is full of resources. Just think of the fact that 50% of the women living in Africa that also, that also suffer are absolutely willing to lead a movement that can change the relationships in all over the planet. Something that has really hit me when I went to Africa, uh, in addition to it was the fact that, that uh, over 40% of the population is very young and these will be the future leaders. So for them, with our contribution to create the necessary conditions, uh, and of course we are not going to support Africa for charities. So of course charity is good, but we are not going to Africa for charity. We actually want to create the necessary conditions so that the poor countries can live on their own resources. So we just think of land grabbing. We want to fight against land grabbing. This is another very serious problem. Something the rich countries that now deprive the African people, and not only Africa, but also the poor countries of their own land and these mm, uh, uh, governments, these uh, people are obliged or forced to, to uh, give up their lands uh, if, they re if they want to survive, if they want to, to feed their children. But in the future, those lands were just used to, to provide food and water to the rich countries and not to the poor ones. So this is a very important signal. We have to work together with Slow Food. We have to collaborate here in our city, in our territory but we have to look beyond and we have to look ahead and trying to bring about global and radical changes. This is certainly a very important challenge, but we are all ready to welcome this challenge and I'm sure that we'll be able to win this challenge. Milan has already started working in this direction because we collaborate with the FAO. We have a very beautiful project that has been developed for the creation of urban gardens in Dakar and then we also want to improve food security in the capital of Senegal. So all these projects are already in place. We have already, Milan has already adopted uh, African gardens, but I'm sure that all the Milan, Milan institutions will be more than willing to adopt more gardens. So I can give you my personal commitment. Today is the day of hope. It's the day when we do not only consider this as a utopia, but we are very rational and consider that this is a an achievable and feasible goal and with uh, I think
think that all together we'll be able to bring about important changes to make people understand that, that uh, we need to reduce, to eliminate waste and to give the possibility to those lands, to those territories that are rich in resources to live, not only to survive, but to live with great dignity, just like every single man and woman has the right to do without suffering. Thank you. It's the privilege of reading a message by Hermano Olmi, who unfortunately could not be with us today. 10,000 gardens in Africa. Why Africa? Why is this continent coming back to the world stage as a main actor, as a winner, or as a victim? Well, none of the two. The reason is very simply its historical relevance. Our present is intoxicated by all sorts of poisons. Soil fertility is poisoned, food is poisoned, even our soul is poisoned by the obsession for wealth and richness. Only half a century ago, the entire world only thought of the American dream. Today, I believe, and I truly believe it, that history forces us to truly understand our times in order to interpret it in all our behaviors in the relationship with others. In the past, world changed and just started all over again after a plague or the slaughter of a war, God's retribution for our mistakes. Today would be a great sign of civilization if we, without any uh, more powerful will, were able to start again out of our own will for the love of justice. Today we have to start from where it all began. We have to go back to the childhood of the world. It's we always need to go back to start all over again. We need to learn and listen to what the earth is telling us. We need to be re-educated by nature. Do you remember, Kathleen, what we said a few years back? The center spring is around us. Well, now I feel something more, a warmth, which announces summer, the reason of the season of harvest. Today we announce the gardens in Africa, gardens of civilization, Let's remember what Jean-Jacques Rousseau warned us about. If you forget that the fruits and harvest belong to everyone and soil does not belong to anyone, you will die. But that's not going to be the case because we are starting over again today. Now I have the honor of presenting the first of our real guests tonight, the main actors of the future. The first one is John Kariuki, 27, born in Kenya. After school he started when selling vegetables and then his life uh, completely changed. He met a professor by chance. He traveled to Italy to attend the University of Gastronomic Sciences and today he is responsible in his own country of 100 community gardens and 5 presidia. John. Sorry, I didn't know you were talking for the podium. Sorry. So subrette. I'll, I'll just say uh, subrette, am I not? Buonasera a tutti. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Kariuki. I am 27 years old. I come from Kenya, where I still live and work. I lived in Italy for four years, and I had the opportunity of graduating at the University for Gastronomic Sciences and then to work for Slow Food. I would like to tell you how and why I arrived to Italy and why I then went back to Kenya. As a kid, I always helped my parents working in the fields, especially during summer holidays. I loved to study, but when I finished high school, my family could not afford university for me. They could not pay for my university courses. So after my high school diploma, I started working with uh, Jonas Kariuki, a childhood friend. 
I understood that you know, the small scale of farmers like my parents could not survive while those who really made money were the intermediaries. That's why I decided to do exactly the same. I decided to become an intermediary. My friend and I started working with potatoes. We would ride our bicycles from village to village. We would load um, sacks of potatoes and then we went to the cities to sell the potatoes. It was hard work. But we earned a lot of money. After a few months in the city, I met my chemistry professor by chance and he was the one who told me about the University of Gastronomic Sciences. He explained it was a unique university which dealt with the many topics related to food and agriculture. It all sounded like a dream but I decided to give it a try. So I spent months to fill out forms, send the documents and then in June 2006 I received the answer. I had won the scholarship to come to Italy. I was very moved, I was so excited. I graduated in February 2010 after three years of study but also journeys, experiences, um, encounters which uh, really marked my life. I participated in Terra Madre and after my graduation I worked at the offices of Slow Food. I then decided to go back to my country, Kenya, where now I work with many farmers' communities. This whole experience opened my eyes and it deeply changed uh, my vision of the world of agriculture and uh, food. This experience convinced me that the path that slow food has embarked on is the right one. It can really change Africa. F in Africa, just like in Kenya, most uh, people are young people like myself. It's now up to us to take on responsibility and decide the fate of our continent. Africa can no longer be the richest uh, continent where the poorest people live. Last year, we carried out a project and we achieved a project we thought was impossible. We launched a thousand gardens in 30 African countries, in the villages, in schools, within the community, communities. Now, I would like to show you a short uh, clip that can give you an idea of what we've done and the people that we have involved. Give value 
to the work that is being done by our small scale farmers by promoting an agriculture that gives them the right to choose what they want to cultivate, eat, and market. To eat our pumpkins, our passion fruits, our boboyas, the matoke, so two things are really And so it became part of us. Uh, 
So it, we did not only, as in students, love our biodiversity. We didn't only love our land. We didn't only love our local food. But we transferred this love, like we showed this love through acting exemplary. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John. Ora vi racconto. Vi racconto. Now I would like to explain what just slow food is in Africa. Take a look at this map. Before 2004, slow food was almost non-existent in Africa. There were only two convivia in South Africa and three presidia in Madagascar and in Morocco. The first Terra Madre, which took place in 2004, changed everything. Take a look at the map of slow food in Africa after 2004. Convivia have become 15 in South Africa, Kenya, in Morocco, Senegal. There are 160 food communities scattered in 36 countries. And then there was another fundamental milestone, the 1000 Gardens in Africa project. Now take a look at what slow food is today after five editions of Terra Madre and the first 1000 Gardens in Africa. Look at our work on biodiversity. We have identified 70 products worth saving that uh, are now part of our Arc of Taste, a huge catalogue that we are creating in order to uh, collect uh, the traditional products which are disappearing from the fields and the tables of uh, African people. I'm thinking of vegetables, but also animal breed, uh, fish, breads, uh, cheese varieties. We haven't stopped the mapping of these products. We've done something that is much more concrete to save them. We've launched 30 presidia in 20 countries. There's one in Morocco with the uh, producers of uh, Taluin saffron, one in Egypt with the um, producers of dates from the Siwa Oasis, one in Mali with the women from Timbuktu which produce a uh, dough, a paste called kata, one in Ethiopia with the gatherers of wild Arabica coffee in the Harena forest, one in Senegal with the women who produce salty couscous in the small island of Padu. We also have a presidium in Madagascar with the Manarara vanilla producers. And then we have the Presidia I follow in Kenya to help the breeders of a local chicken breed, as well as the producers of a very special kind of yogurt made with ashes. There are many, many more. But uh, this is the, la the, the last map that I'm showing here, really gives you a full idea of what we are doing now. Look at the green dots. They represent the 1,000 gardens in our country. We have 200, and there are so many in the rest of the continent. There are still some countries where there are no gardens, but in the next few years, with the 10,000 Gardens project, we want to involve young people and producers everywhere. I hope you believe in us, and I hope you can help us achieve this dream. Thank you very much. Thank you from my heart. Good evening. The second protagonist of tonight is Marianne Watara from the Ivory Coast. He started 47 gardens and uh, over the next few years it will be, it will be making others and uh, she mainly works to help the women because they are the basis of the African agriculture even though they are often excluded from the important decisions. For this reason, her gardens are, are entirely managed by women's community. Good evening, my name is 
Mariam Watara from the Ivory Coast. And I'm the Shikata Convivian leader that in the local language means hope. Uh, I will be presenting the role of women in uh, the African uh, agriculture, but I would now like to speak about the uh, relationship with slow food. Basically, I found out about slow food when I was studying in France, uh, when I was talking to a group of farmers from the Ivory Coast who had attended Terra Madre. And I immediately decided to start doing something very tangible and concrete for my country in order to uh, promote the slow food philosophy in 2006. When I went back home, I started dealing with uh, groups of women as uh, they are the main system of handing over knowledge uh, in different groups of people. And I come from a far, uh, farmer's family and immediately understood the strategic role of women in the rural African family. And actually, women are at the core uh, of farming. They are definitely the pillars of family agriculture in Africa and they provide the uh, force, the other work force in, in the field as they represent 70% of the farming workforce and they cover 80% of food production. In Western Africa, for example, rice growing and production is mainly managed by women and uh, most of the women deal with uh, all of the uh, different works. Uh, they sow the seeds, uh, they uh, plant the land and they, they transport the rice, they uh, preserve rice and then they sell it to the markets. Uh, and um, so they deal with different tasks. They also um, deal with uh, breeding, so everything that is needed to ensure farming. But the main contribution of African women can be identified in the preservation and processing and reproduction of the seeds. Uh, from this point of view, they play a fundamental role because if the communities lose the capacity of uh, reproducing the traditional seeds varieties, then uh, the uh, local people will no longer have the possibility to be self-sufficient uh, for the food production and therefore they will not be able to um, defend themselves against uh, the multinational, the corporations' uh, pressure. So even though they have such an important role, uh, women are excluded from the management of the revenues and the income deriving from these activities. So for this reason, we decided to support the uh, 1000 um, Garden Project in Africa. And thanks to this project, uh, we worked hard in order to reinforce and strengthen uh, the family agriculture in order to promote the role of women and uh, to help them gain a more and more important role uh, because uh, in Africa, there is intensive monoculture that unfortunately um, mainly dominates the current agriculture, while instead the slow food gardens represent the ideal model of family agriculture because the women work all together, they respect the environment much more, and they have learned how to produce compost, to reproduce the seeds, something that is absolutely fundamental in our country because uh, in our country we have been affected by 10 years of civil war and a lot of chemicals have been used. There was a massive use of chemicals, so we have raised the women's awareness to reduce the use of pesticides and chemicals in order to um, safeguard the family's health. Then a lot of the food is used for the family consumption and then the rest is sold in the markets. So far, we have created 47 gardens and we hope we'll uh, be creating more and more gardens in the future. So uh, we'll keep on supporting this new phase of the project and, and we'll do our best. Uh, we'll try to do even more of what we have done so far in order to reach the goal of the 10,000 gardens. So thank you very much for your help and support in uh, supporting the role of women in Africa as part of these 10,000 in the uh, project. Thank you very much.
also the third protagonist, the third gladiator, is called Idra Mokibi. He's 28 years old and he comes from Uganda. He works with a group of uh, young people full of passion and they communicate thanks to the mobile phones and the radios and thanks to this collaboration he has created a lot of gardens and procedures and is now classifying all the products uh, all over his country and he thinks that that is very important to focus on biodiversity and the network of knowledge. Good evening. Edward, like he said, uh, Africa has uh, a testimony tonight. Three years ago, Slow Food embarked on a challenge, a continental challenge to create 1,000 gardens in Africa. By then, many of us thought it's a very ambitious plan to achieve. We thought it was very difficult for us to achieve. But today we have not only created the gardens, we, have not, we are not only managing the gardens, we have created a network of leaders, we have created a wave of leadership, a network of people who are preserving African biodiversity, our farming systems, who can determine and decide our land and what we get from our land. We have not only created these gardens, but we have created an opportunity to involve more young people in agriculture, to involve more, ch more children, to involve more women, and to streamline the activities of every African person in defining our own food. These gardens are very, very important because they, they are areas where we can learn to preserve our biodiversity, we can learn to communicate our food, we learn to preserve our resources, and we involve the women, the children, and everyone, every young person. When I was uh, a student studying agronomy in Uganda, I worked with my university to promote a new variety of maize, a hybrid variety of maize in Uganda. And we did this uh, to make, uh, encourage the farmers, the small scale farmers, to allocate more land to this maize produce this maize and because we thought this is a type of maize which will save them from famine, which will give them more income, which will make their livelihoods better. We worked with them and they allocated most of their land to this maize which means they gave up most of their, uh, the, the land which they used to produce most of their crops. But as many of us in Africa are aware, we didn't know that we are making a mistake because African environment is very tricky. The African climate is very different from the laboratory where these maize varieties, new crops, and corn. We went and worked with the farmers, and in the end, after farmers getting loans and buying the seed from one seed company which was interested with it, in 2007, drought came and hit the country. Before anyone harvested anything, farmers made a terrible loss. They lost their crop. They lost their home. They lost hope in farming. They lost hope in agriculture. But because they had received bank loans from microfinances to buy the seed from one seed company, they had somehow, somewhere to, have to pay back the loan. And when I went back to meet the farmers, it was a big shame because the, their faces were communicating to me that the direction we are taking is not right. We cannot determine from the laboratories, we cannot determine from offices the food for Africa. It's Africans who determine their food because we know our resources better. So this is the communication which the faces were telling us. After talking to the farmers, the event in 2007 completely changed my way of thinking. It changed my view of agriculture in Africa. I'm a tropical agriculturist. 
but it completely changed my view. It showed me that we need to work closely with the producers who know their resources, who work with these resources every day, who know their seed. We need to work with them. We need to leave them to define their own food. I, wa I started working with the farmers. I changed my thinking, I changed my mind, and I went back. I started working with the small scale producers to see that we receive seed, we, we achieve seed sovereignty. We don't depend on this one hybrid. That we achieve water sovereignty, we achieve land sovereignty, food sovereignty was very important. And I made sure that I work closely with them that we can define what we plant and what we eat in the end and which land we use to produce this food. And I, 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 later I realized I was not alone in this struggle. After joining the farmers, we are doing a lot of good work on the ground, but I was not alone. There was slow food and the Tramadre network. Also working in Africa to preserve African biodiversity, give food sovereignty to small-scale producers in Africa, to catalog African products, the rich, rich biodiversity of our products we have. In 2008, I joined slow food. Because it's a decision which I made and I will never ever regret why I joined Slow Food to defend African biodiversity. It's a decision which everyone needs to make. I joined Slow Food together with a group of young, passionate people. In the, in, uh, we started creating the gardens. We started working with the smallholder producers. We started cataloging our heritage, our food heritage, the rich food heritage, the rich food tradition we have in Africa. We have created gardens all over Africa. And not only creating these gardens, we have cataloged our traditional African products, which are at risk of extinction. We have contributed to the arc of taste. We have cataloged, we have created presidia. We have pres uh, slow food in Africa, in posts of presidia from different countries. In Uganda, we have two presidia, one in on the Ankole Long Hondi Kato, the white with white horns. We have a presidium on a special variety of Robusta coffee. Uh, uh, you ha we have presidia in Kenya, we have presidia in Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, Morocco, South Africa, with the Zulu sheep, and many other uh, presidia. This is African products. These are African products. This is our heritage. And we communicate with everyone. We communicate, we have a very good network in Africa, which we have built over these years. We communicate using social media, mobile phones, radios, all means we can use to communicate our food, to communicate with each other, because we need this opportunity to share our knowledge. We need this opportunity to work with the older people, because we are young, we need to learn from them. And in the end, also, we teach them something, because we are the future. We are the future leaders of food in Africa. We are the future leaders of Africa. So this is how we work to connect each other and to link up with each other. We have organized trainings in Rwanda, in Tanzania, in Uganda for all the African leaders in so forth. This is the network which we believe in and it's the network which will preserve African biodiversity. It is very, very wrong, very wrong for multinationals to keep pushing for monocultures in Africa. It's wrong because we have for many years African farmers have defined their own food. They have planted a diverse of crops. We have traditional farming systems in Africa, like the banana coffee system. It's not a monoculture. The name the name suggests we have like the agroforestry system. It's not a monoculture. From these farmers, we are able to select what to eat, and they never, ever went hungry in Africa. It, uh, through the monocultures, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, organizations and uh, uh, multinationals pushing for monocultures, and also increasing the use of pesticides. All our agriculture, we are starting to depend on agrochemicals, pesticides. It's the reason why we are facing the food problems today in Africa. It's not that it, it was there a long time ago. No, we were self-reliant because of the diversity of crops we grow. And promoting monocultures can be considered a crime against humanity.
it takes away our right to choose our food, to choose our agriculture, to defend our food. Every day people talk about human rights, planting monocultures in Africa, big expanses of grabbed land. We consider it crime against humanity in Africa. So the journey which we are starting today, the 10,000 gardens in Africa, in Milan today, means preserving African biodiversity. The journey which we are starting today means creating a strong leadership in Africa to define our food, to bring back hope to the African continent, to make Africa a rich continent without hungry people, without the poorest people. This is the journey we are starting. It's not only about creating a garden, but the journey we are starting means biodiversity defense, cataloging our of test products, sharing knowledge, defining our own food, promoting African gastronomy, creating a wave of leadership, educating and training young leaders in Africa. This is the journey we need, because, and also promoting biodiversity. Through this, Africa can feed itself. We can feed ourselves if we handle this project with a lot of energy. If we have all the support from everyone, this is the gift, the best gift we can give to Africa. And we are ready to give this gift to Africa. Thank you. introduce the fourth uh, builder of the future of Africa and certainly a better future for all of us because this way we'll be all brothers and sisters and, and not just masters and this is thanks to Slow Food. So Vineta Diallo is the daughter of uh, a shepherd and a farmer when uh, she was a child. She sold food straight with her mother now. She manages a very important restaurant in Dakar and she's trying to convince the Senegal people to rediscover their traditional cereals like phonium, sorghum and millet. Uh, Mineta is convinced that producing and consuming local food is a, a crucial political fight for the future of Africa. and dear guests and participants, I would like to welcome all of you. I'm Vineta Diallo, I'm the Taraman chef and I'm the Dakar Sinotio San Convivian leaders. I come from Dakar, which is the capital of Senegal, but I actually come from Fondunia, a very small village which is in the southeast of Senegal. So I'm the daughter of a shepherd and a farmer. And I started to become a cook by helping my mother, who um, every morning sold this food for a kind of cereal porridge with the Congo sauce, and then the Akananya Bay kind of beans and meatballs. Uh, with a, tomato, a very spicy tomato sauce and then I worked in a hotel and then finally I opened my own thematic restaurant that uh, uh, provides and serves a local food. Well I've always been fond of local food and in my restaurant I've always tried to promote and disseminate information about the local products. In 2004 I found out that it was an international association promoting all over the world ideas that were 
very similar to mine, and that association was slow food. So I attended the greatest meeting organized by Slow Food at Salamanca. And when I went back to, when I came back to Senegal, I created my uh, slow food convivium, and I also took part, I also developed uh, a local project called Amangean Local because I wanted uh, the families and the children to find out more about uh, the traditional Senegal recipes and products that are absolutely full of nutrients and very healthy. So I also um, contributed uh, to publish a book which is a catalogue of the uh, traditional Senegal products and recipes. In Senegal, most of the people actually prefer to uh, purchase and consume white rice imported from Thailand, especially in big uh, cities like Dakar. But you might wonder why I promoted this project called Manjan Dakar. So why is it so important to promote local, uh, eating local? So why not using all the uh, imported food from Asia, Europe and um, other countries? Well, actually choosing and consuming local products is a very strong political act. It means to respect the environment, to safeguard our biodiversity, but especially it means to support our agriculture and to help our farmers uh, who represent the majority of the population in all the African countries. So it means uh, supporting the African economies and therefore safeguarding our cultures and traditions. But not only these, the local products uh, are definitely more fresh and they do not contain any preservatives. Therefore, therefore their taste is much better. They're much more uh, nutritious and they are definitely much better for our health. So before the imported industrial food full of salt, uh, fats and sugar, we did not know that diseases like diabetes and hypertension, illnesses that instead are nowadays are more and more widespread. So if we produced what we consume and we consumed what we produce, that would be a huge advantage for everyone. And this is what my students say, those who are invo involved in the uh, local eating project. And now let's talk about the role of chefs because they have a fundamental role for promoting the, uh, con the production and consumption of local products. So from this point of view, chefs can be ambassadors also to promote the traditional and local recipes because not only we are losing our uh, local products, but we are also losing the knowledge to uh, cook them and to process this food. So all together we have to improve and enhance the work of our farmers and together we can promote the value of the different African gastronomies that are not absolutely second-rate gastronomies but instead they have absolutely the same value of the European gastronomy, the Asian gastronomies, or the South American gastronomies over the next few years. We have to create a big network of chefs to promote the slow food philosophy and work in each single country in order to create, to establish a very big alliance between the consumers and the producers and the chefs, of course. So we have to organize different initiatives and events and meetings with the skilled people uh, in order to train and educate the people uh, at local level to promote this development. We'll have to use uh, the local products of the procedure and promote our traditional recipes uh, because our recipes uh, will have to go beyond our borders and be known by everyone and also consider that most of our health depends on what we eat, depends on the diet. So the uh, food system is obviously fundamental for the development of the African continent, so Manjan Lokal, the project I 
uh, promoted is uh, promotes uh, the um, farming and uh, uh, consumption and selling of local uh, food only. This way we'll be able to support uh, our local economy and to fight against poverty and malnutrition and to make sure that our countries uh, will um, be self-sufficient in food production and this way we'll be able to help all the different African gastronomies. Thank you for your um, support. of ours that is present here tonight also. Please clap your hands because Sergio Stein is here in the audience. to harvest the rain. 
rainwater and many other uh, instruments. Then another amount um, it will be used to ensure the right to, to travel to these African leaders, to the farmers and the women. Um, because uh, one of the main causes of their weakness is the fact that they are isolated. Because to learn is absolutely fundamental for them to visit the other gardens, or to uh, meet the other producers, or to see the other countries, and to exchange information. This was clearly demonstrated by Tara Madre that uh, proved that these farmers who travel, who get out of their countries, of their villages, they come here to meet other farmers just like them and they exchange information and when they go back to Africa they're much stronger than before. Then another amount will be used to pay for these scholarships to these African uh, young people because these people can come here, they attend the university and then they go back to their home country to work with the local communities of farmers and we, they can use the information, the knowledge that they learned here and of course they have great enthusiasm, the great passion in the work that they do. And then another amount will be used to, to print uh, the uh, teaching material in the highest number of languages, not only English, French and Portuguese, but also Swahili, uh, Amharic, uh, Arab, Arabic and many other languages. And it will also be used to communicate with everyone, also for those people who do not know the colonial languages. So this communication uh, is normally made in different ways, so through different instruments, um, through the paper, through the internet, or through the community radio and also through the mobile phones. Then another amount will be used to pay for the court, for the international coordination of the project. And this coordination is absolutely crucial because uh, these uh, 10,000 gardens in Africa um, is not just in Senegal, in Morocco or in Kenya, but it is a project which actually involves the whole African continent. But not only the great strength of this project is closely linked with its capacity to create a network involving a lot of different subjects all over the world, Europe, America and Asia. So with these 900 euros, we are not only going to create a garden, but we are, uh, we are sowing the seeds in many different directions so that the final harvest will be very rich and uh, wonderful. So we have the responsibility not to waste this big opportunity and that's why we're here to ask you to walk side by side over the next few years to give us your solidarity and to believe in our work. in a very clear way the goal that our movement had set at the last uh, Congress in Turin in October 2012. The idea is uh, to mobilize uh, society through the entire movement to create these 10,000 gardens that, as you may have understood, are not only gardens as such, the goal is not only to set up 10,000 gardens, the goal is to create a network of leaders who are young and even the less young who can decide the fate of the food and agricultural policies of the continent. It's a huge challenge. Now I have of course to thank you all for being here. He, this is not a public event, you know that you've all been uh, personally invited for what you have already done for our movement, for what you are doing and for what very probably you will still help us do. So this intimate gathering among friends and people who care for the work 
that many of our members have done in the past years, even our non-members, through a network which is now present in 160 countries with more than 300,000 uh, activists. And uh, this is an opportunity today to talk to those who have already believed in us and who've believed in us for a long time. You see, we have chosen as a slogan a sentence by Nelson Mandela. It always, is, it always seems impossible until it's done. An idea sounds impossible, it seems impossible, and you know it. You've accompanied us throughout the years. It seemed impossible to create the university in Polenzo with an investment uh, which if we had to make again today, well, I don't know if we could manage it. It seemed crazy to create such a university in Polenzo and it seemed impossible to set up a small international university which now has more than 500 students from 70 countries in the world. It seemed impossible to organize that on Adra even, which has uh, sown the seeds of a wonderful network. Terra Madre. Was represented here today in a very tangible way by the network in a continent where, without Terra Madre, Slow Food would never be present. Also, we would never have so many young people working uh, for Slow Food. We have over 40,000 activists in, Terra, in Africa who work for the network. We have 40,000 young people, farmers, communities, uh, who work at universities, they work in the villages, they work in the gardens, and they need, uh, at this stage, to strengthen their leaders. They need, right now, they need to rest assured and know that the network will be governed by them. They must be the leaders of the network, they must be the active actors of these members. They must be the main um, actors of change. I'm sure you know how difficult it is to do something like that in a continent like Africa, where injustice happens every day, where in many parts of the continent, the political situation is a disaster. There are parts of the continent where governments couldn't care less about these issues. However, I still think that something is changing. In all parts of Africa, something is changing thanks to these young people, thanks to a movement that comes from the roots and which day after day gets stronger and stronger, it becomes more and more responsible. A movement which is uh, carrying out the best protest because it works in uh, the countryside and in cities as well. We've talked about community gardens, the village gardens, school gardens. However, let's not forget gardens in the large African cities. In Nairobi, for instance, or in Dakar, in many other large cities, there are gardens in a huge ute bags because there's no other space left. Now, those gardens feed three, four people, and they are the best drug, the best medicine against AIDS. AIDS cannot be defeated in Africa without a healthy diet. And a healthy diet starts from the love and care with which young people and farmers um, implement a different agricultural system. 
Now, this is the real revolution that Africa is um, carrying out. You've heard it from the five people who've uh, come up on stage. It's only five years, but there are 40,000 people behind them who believe in the same thing. So, I, of course, must thank you all for being here tonight and for accepting to spend a couple of hours with us. I believe you go back home richer people. You will, I think you've probably learned new things. You may have heard about the gardens. You may have seen them at Terra Mauta. You may have had a hint of what is going on. But you need to hear it from the voices of these people. You have to see it with your eyes. You have to physically feel their determination and their passion. So I thank you all once again. I should thank you one by one. 450 of you have shared years of adventures with all of you. Sometimes we've been successful, some other times we haven't been that successful, but still, uh, work has consolidated the um, interest that has developed around our movement, and I thank you for your contribution. I also thank all the artists who've uh, joined us tonight and have presented our guests. I thank Sergio Steiner. I thank all those who, in a way or another, have come here from all over Italy. I also thank two old persons who are radicals, although in a different way. One who could not move because he's surrounded by three meters of snow in Asiago and sent us a message. But there's another one who's here in the first row, and it's Dario Fo, my friend, a Nobel Prize for Literature. kinds of radicals, and I think I've said it all. I believe in people who have the strength of their ideas and they're also able to convey them with no fear, with no fear of uh, swimming against the current in some cases. There are two very important men to me, they're examples, and I also feel that they give me interesting inputs. Also, I would like to thank the mayor of Milan, who, ha who opened uh, tonight's uh, event, and who was kind enough to host us in this city. A city, Milan, who is getting ready to host uh, an extraordinary event. Now, this extraordinary event, and I'm saying it because here in the room, we have uh, many people who are involved in Expo 2015. Now, Expo 2015 cannot overlook the topics that we've discussed tonight. Expo 2015 must highlight, and the topics we've talked about tonight are at the core of the lives of uh, thousands and thousands of people. I would like to get to the Expo and experience the six months of Expo with uh, this goal gardens in Africa, which will have, uh, which will be achieved, or at least half achieved. I think that this could be the best contribution that we can give to an expo which will attract the interest and attention of the entire world. We have the duty of making it an event which is able to really understand how agriculture works, how the world of food works in order to overcome the schizophrenia that uh, our lives are pervaded by, a schizophrenia caused by the coexistence of a very odd world. And I'm talking about Italy. I mean, Italy has never talked that much about food, and we've never wasted at the same time so much food. Africa should not 
be perceived as something that is on the other side of the world. Africa is inside us, is here, not only because the people who die in our seas, but also because we have many people from Africa who live in our cities. When we think of this continent, we must strengthen a feeling of solidarity, of brotherhood, which goes beyond any political barrier, which goes beyond uh, the um, terrible things that the uh, Western world has imposed on uh, the uh, African continent, all the uh, misdeeds, the bad deeds that the West has done against Africa. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Graziano da Silva. Many of you know that he was one of the main uh, actors in the fight against hunger. He comes from a wonderful country, Brazil, and he and Brazil achieved one of the best things in the last decades. Millions and millions of Brazilians have shifted from misery and suffering to a dignified life. Graziano da Silva is now the, President, the Secretary General of the FAO and this gives us great joy because of the way he approaches the topic, because he cares about local agriculture, he cares about family agriculture, about small-scale agriculture, he's aware of all these problems. For far too long, family agriculture has been seen as a mere subsistence agriculture, and uh, subsistence agriculture hasn't uh, been given the value it deserves. So this is a huge mistake that we've made. We've, uh, believe that subsistence economy equals misery. We thought it was something to abandon, to live behind, because the right economy is completely different. This was a terrible, a huge mistake, and we're still paying the bill for it, even in our countries, not just in Africa. We have to go back to respecting subsistence economy. We have to understand, again, that agriculture had a strong backbone and revolved around a subsistence economy. We need to realize it once again. Abandoning and making fun of this agriculture was a huge strategic mistake. The new paradigm forces us to take a step back. As Mr. Olmi said, we have to take a step back and care again and understand once again that subsistence economy in farming, in agriculture, is the most important element of it. Jose, I thank you very much for being here tonight. The, the year for family agriculture, 2014, will be a year of great mobilization. You were in Brussels as well, where I said that whoever believes that this type of agriculture family agriculture, small-scale agriculture, whoever believes that this is old is wrong. It is extremely modern. It is the most modern kind of agriculture that we can propose to the world. Beware of believing there's no modernity in this kind of agriculture. It's the most modern of all. and. Uh, we will become aware that we can have family farming, subsistence agriculture, they can be combined with the new tools, the tools of the modern communication or with IT. These two worlds can coexist with these young people. I mean, don't think that they don't use it. They do use new tools. Eddie promoted to radio stations in his country. You know how much I love the radio. I've always loved it. I've loved it for more than 30 years. I was one, I even worked for a radio. Now, small radio stations or small radios that farmers listen to to know when the time of sowing has come and to know and to learn about food practices. They use cell phones, they use the internet. Of course, young Africans already use all these instruments and tools. They will express their leadership through the new media and tools. Now, I would like to conclude by saying that the features of this project, of this initiative, are basically two. 
and I would like to emphasize them with great determination. And I want to emphasize them because they are the two characteristics which allow this network to defeat the evils of Africa. I only mentioned three of these evils. One is the most shameful of all. Still, it is still the continent where the mo most deaths of hunger t happen. Now, dying of hunger at the beginning of the 21st century is unacceptable. Land grabbing is the second evil. It was already mentioned, but I would also like to add pollution. Pollution. We are now suffering what is happening in Campania in the south of Italy, where waste was spread on the land. But before tons and tons of waste, before going to Campania, went to Africa. We shipped our waste to Africa. This is shameful. We, it is our duty to fight against this. Now, that, let's go back to the two features of this project, the two characteristics of this initiative. First, the contacts, the reference points of uh, this project must be African people. It's up to them. They are the main actors. They are the protagonists. They must be the leaders of the whole operation. Our movement, Slow Food, is committed to supporting the project. We are going to help them. But if the Africans are not the protagonists of the whole project, it doesn't even make sense. The time is over when the white men went to Africa to do good, or those who now go to Africa cannot be the ones who decide the political and cultural fate of the continent. It's up to them. They are the protagonists. This is extremely important. This is holistic um, dimension whereby they're not just uh, the leaders of the gardens, but they're also the leaders of the networks, of the kitchens, of uh, local gastronomy, of markets. Now, this is the vision that makes them autonomous and strong. Second feature, and please have mercy on me and accept this as an act of friendship. I would like us all here to take on a burden because we have a responsibility. Our civilization is responsible for a colonialism and for the grabbing of the wealth of Africa. When I talked about pollution, I'm not talking about the past. It, the past is still happening at the mouth of the Niger. Oil companies, including Italian oil companies, have uh, caused the greatest, the worst pollution in the history of Africa. It's horrible. So the psychological attitude we must have is extremely important. And please join me in this. We cannot uh, do charity. It's not charity that we are talking about here. No, not at all. We must give back. Well, you may wonder, what do I have to give back? I did nothing wrong. Well, we are the children of a civilization which lived off colonialism and uh, which uh, imposed colonialism and is still doing it. We must become responsible and embrace a responsible attitude. I'm saying it to you guys as well. This is the same reasoning that you should have with the people who govern you. Now the 10,000 gardens must uh, be supported by your own governments, by your own countries. It is with this approach that we will be able to walk together. 
You're not the poor ones who must be helped by those who have some more money. No, not at all. We are all together in this. Of course, this requires a decolonization of our thought. And decolonizing our thoughts is extremely hard. It's very hard. A few weeks ago, I participated in a conference of a um, research center in uh, Africa, a, a, a study, a research center on African studies. There was a honest guy, believe me, a nice person, nice guy who said, he, he said to us in the audience, he said, well, if you think about colonialism as the colonialism of the past, you're wrong. Modern colonialism is uh, perpetrated by China. It's China which is paying and that uh, money is used to grab land. It's true, but listen to what comes next. He said, modern colonialism is uh, caused by China, who's very strong in Africa, and we as Italians are sleeping. So we need to decolonize our thoughts which means that we are not sleeping because Africa is land to do what the Chinese are doing. We're not uh, sleeping on this. We must be there with a strong political and cultural act, uh, which is the highest uh, that we can show as a country. We must be the brothers of Africa. Then the rest will come. The rest is just talking. It's just words. Now, this is a strong concept. We need to decolonize our thoughts. And this comes from the idea of giving back. Who cares about those who stole are not giving back now? And we are part of this society. We are responsible. So our society must take on the responsibility. Mandela took on the responsibility of forgiveness. And by the same token, we must take on the responsibility of uh, our society. This is the best contribution that we can give Africa and to this project. Now, let me conclude with two quotations which are typical of my Piedmont region. When uh, we wanted to convince someone to be generous, there were two ways, two, two sayings. Uh, the first one, very quickly, for the four days that you still have to live, you only have four days to live. And that's it. That was, you, you didn't need to say anything more. You just have four more days to live. Can you believe the wisdom of farmers? They didn't have to say, do this, do that, give this. For the four days that you have to live, that's all they needed to say. Be generous. Don't worry, just be generous. You only have four days to live. Now, the second saying was typical of a poor farming society, and it went like this. What is uh, little is too little. I, what is little is little. Nothing is too little. So, little is little, nothing is too little. That's when we were really poor. Around that little, there were even those who had a lot. So, here's my last message to you. Little is little. A little more is even better. Thank you.
you know, the year 2014 has been declared by the United Nations as the International Year of Family Farming, that the FL has the honor to coordinate. And this year, Africa also celebrates its African Year of Agriculture and Food Security. So these two observances frame nicely the pride to do that. Yes, because they are family farmers and with what it implies in the food production, in the, the community development and the food security worldwide. So now please allow me to shift to Spanish. When I talk about family farming and agriculture, I make reference to the small farmers and the indigenous populations and the traditional communities that are so important all over the world. Of course, I make reference to the shepherds and the fishermen, the harvesters and many others. So in these international year, the African year, are two important occasions to understand tonight's event, which is dedicated to the 10,000 guards project in Africa. It is um, an initiative that we welcome uh, with a great enthusiasm for the potential that it has uh, for the present times and the future too. So all the people gathered here and around the world are part of this effort which is absolutely fundamental in order to bring about changes. So we have to share this effort to guarantee the future security of every single person and we also have to share this effort in order to offer these people a different perspective in order to think about our future in a different way, a perspective which is made up of hope and not of fear. The food that we put on our plate and how it used to produce the food that we consume. So these are fundamental elements that are absolutely crucial for the food security. Some decades ago, the world chose the path of increasing production through the intensive use of chemicals. The Green Revolution was the right response that time, but on the one hand it avoided uh, widespread famine in Asia, on the other it couldn't end hunger in the world, and it increased production, uh, but the result uh, was uh, a degraded land and water. In general, the world decided to, to um, deposit to food security in the invisible hands of international agricultural commodity markets. So for years, this decision to use this apparently resource of cheap food seemed to work just fine. However, decades of low food prices put millions of poor farmers out of business to the point in which the world now faces today, that is, this paradox, this puzzling paradox, because over 70% of the population suffering from uh, food insecurity in the world now lives in rural areas in the developing countries. And many of them are small-scale farmers, as uh, Carlo Petrini pointed out, that cannot produce what they need to guarantee their own subsistence and, and to feed their families. And so for our present and our future, therefore we need to strike a better balance between the international markets and the local communities, between the need to increase production and uh, the uh, need to preserve and use our natural resources um, wisely. So we need to the same innovative spirit that uh, we adopted in the 70s, obviously adapted to current, the current age, we need a doubly green revolution that values more sustainable organic uh, practices uh, to produce healthy food. So are we ready?
ready to build such an alternative and what alter alternative do we have? So the answer is yes, I say that we do and the alternative is sustainability as its basic premise uh, with, together with social inclusion as its core and the small farmers and the local communities are the leading actors, the main protagonists of this process for decades. Uh, the poor farmers uh, uh, have seen as a problem to be solved. But uh, where people and governments um, have understood that family farmers are part of the solution uh, and that uh, for this reason, uh, we have now been able to um, give them the right support and then we have seen exciting results because over 60 countries now have already met the uh, Millennium Development Goal hunger target of reducing by half the proportion of hungry people as it was established or at least uh, undernourishment has uh, been minimized and around 20 of these countries are in Africa, at least one third of the countries that have managed to uh, reach the first uh, target for the millennium development and the African leaders have just set the target to completely eradicate hunger in that region by 2025, a goal that has already been adapted uh, adopted by the Latin American and Caribbean leaders uh, uh, since 2009. And these are bold political commitments and certainly an important step towards food, food security. Is it too ambitious? So it is eradicating food. Well, I will repeat what Nelson Mandela, Mandela said. It always seems impossible until it's done. So, ladies and gentlemen, in very simple terms, uh, strengthen family farming translates itself into greater local availability of food, especially where they are necessary and absolutely required. And we eat in our houses, in our communities, and the farmers, the small farmers, run a diversified agriculture uh, that is fundamental to preserve um, uh, biodiversity and uh, uh, many thousands of plant species and varieties consumed traditionally are now disappearing. They are endangered while recovering these crops uh, and safeguarding local food habits is an important contribution to more diversified nutrition and balanced diets. Family farming is a fundamental for the social inclusion of many families and young people because inclusion means understanding, respecting and supporting the role of women in food security and very often it is the heads of the families who mainly, they are often those who provide food to the families and the women are involved in the whole food production chain. Well just look at Africa for instance, to most of the African population lives in rural areas and it is expected to continue until 2015. At the same time, three Africans out of four are below 25 years of age and uh, they represent the potential that we are trying to support through this project tonight. The 10,000 food gardens will increase uh, food production and local availability of food and uh, they are fundamental to change the paradigm that is a greater respect of local uh, agriculture and uh, the safeguarding of these activities and projects like this one demonstrated that it is possible to achieve sustainable uh, food production systems and as you can see we have a diversified group of people but they're all very united because we have with the young leaders and the creation of these gardens we have the possibility to improve food security and it is absolutely fundamental not only for Africa but also for Europe and the rest of the world. Around 20 percent of the uh, total foreigners living in Europe actually come from the uh, southern and eastern Mediterranean countries. The illegal border crossings are an issue of 
growing concern in Europe that can be um, that very often have dramatic results, as it happened at, on the Lampedusa Island, and the illegal immigration from North Africa has doubled over the last year. In 2011, the European Union ordered over 140,000 illegal border crossings, and 85% of which came through the Mediterranean routes. Many of these people are youth that are forced into migration because of the lack of economic opportunities in their home countries. And so it's our common and shared responsibility to create new opportunities for these young people. It is our common responsibility to help them and give them the opportunity to have a decent life and to raise their own family and make sure that the fishermen keep on being fishermen without turning into pirates, making sure that the farmers can use their own instruments and their land in order to work in their land and not to uh, fight in conflicts and wars. And so not only what is important is the food production of is the social inclusion and sustainability those these elements all together are the only means through which we can create spaces where the food, the young people uh, can gather learn and build social capital this is an exercise that strengthens communities and networks and can help transform the youth of today into tomorrow's leaders the protagonists of the debate and the de decisions on the um, uh, food security policy in the countries. Thank you very much for your attention. Grazie a tutti. So I would like to thank all of you and again congratulations with our young African leaders. This has been an excellent opportunity and please follow us over the next four years and support us. There will be extremely hard years but we wanted to win this great challenge so please give us a hand and uh, so we've disturbed you to invite you to this meeting, but over the next few months we will keep on disturbing you to uh, keep your promises. So thank you. Thank you very much once again. Sale, y a lo bueno, sale, y a